the well, as you know, this parliament was adjourned for 40 days. It's the first time in the history of the Parliament of St. Lucia that a debate on a budget, such an important budget, the government's first budget in office, that the Prime Minister saw it fitting to adjourn it for 40 days. That has serious implications for the country. There could be no capital expenses, there could be no new initiatives because the budget had not been passed. The Prime Minister did not care. Having adjourned it for 40 days, and we can only say it was adjourned because of spitefulness and vindictiveness, and the Prime Minister wants to make the point that he is in charge. The Labour Party understands the Prime Minister is in charge. The, 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 uh, our party has agreed that the government has won the election, and we are willing to work for the benefit of St. Lucia. Having adjourned the House for 40 days, we come back to Parliament and the member for Labri speaks. It is convention and normal that after an opposition uh, member speaks, a member of the government responds. Again, we came willing and able to, to, and to speak to the issues of the budget. But the Prime Minister, in his normal, vindictive, and spiteful manner, because he has the power of rebuttal, refuses to allow four senior members of his government to speak. You must understand, Stevenson King was a former prime minister. He holds an important portfolio of infrastructure and ports. We wanted to hear from Mr. King what was the state of the Grosley Highway, what was the state of the Hiwanora Airport. The prime minister did not allow Stevenson King to speak. Ezekiel Joseph, who is in effect the Deputy Prime Minister, has the important portfolio of agriculture. We wanted to hear from Ezekiel Joseph. What's the plight of the banana farmers? What's the plight of the marketing board? What's the plight of the Fish and Marketing Corporation? He did not allow Ezekiel Joseph to speak. Leonard Motut is the Minister for Equity and Justice. We want to hear from Leonard Motut. What's the plight of the nice workers? What are these people doing since they haven't got any jobs? What's the plight of the SSDF? He did not allow him to speak. Then there is the Minister of Sports, who is a free-time parliamentarian. We want to, to find out from the Minister of Sports why the Prime Minister never mentioned sports for one word in his budget. Sports was never mentioned in the budget of the Prime Minister. I invite members of the press to pursue the budget, and you will find that the Prime Minister never mentioned the word sports in the budget. We want to, to hear from the Minister of Sports what was the situation regarding sports in the country. If you look at playing fields in the country, the playing fields have never looked, have never been in that state for many years. I invite you to look at the playing fields in the country. You will see the state of the playing fields. We wanted to ask the Minister, we wanted the Minister of Sports to tell the public what is the condition of being fields. But the Prime Minister, in a spiteful and vindictive manner, closes the budget and begins a, a, a charade of lies, of innuendos, of threats, of insults against the members of the SLP. We will not allow the Prime Minister to run roughshod over us. I wrote the Prime Minister and I said to him, Prime Minister, there are some issues. I wrote him in a respectful manner, deserving of the treatment of a Prime Minister. I wrote him and I said to him, there are some issues that we need to, to discuss. The Prime Minister hasn't got the courtesy. I wrote him on the 29th of May. He hasn't had the courtesy to respond and even acknowledge the receipt of my letter. We have said to the government that we are not against St. Lucia. We have a responsibility to St. Lucia. 37,000 people voted for us. We want to defend these people. We like St. Lucia. We want St. Lucia to progress. We want St. Lucia to advance. But the government is callous. It holds the opposition in contempt. It's vindictive. It's spiteful. And it believes in victimization. You heard from them themselves. You've just started to cry. So the government, the, the whole 
posture of the government is to make us cry. And the Prime Minister, you, and, and that, that does happen before in the Parliament. The whole situation regarding the Deputy Speaker is the first time in the, history, in the history of the Parliament that we do not have a Deputy Speaker. All governments, including the government of Sir John Compton, when there was a majority, once a government has the a majority, the government appoints the Deputy Speaker. This Prime Minister has officiated or is officiating on, on the largest cabinet ever in the history of St. Lucia. He's made every member, elected or non-elected, a minister. And he refuses to appoint a Deputy Speaker. Then there was a matter of the motion on the CIP. The Prime Minister has drastically amended the laws as they relate to the CIP. The Honorable Ernest Hillier rightfully and dutifully put a motion that followed all the necessary procedures. On the morning of the debate, the Prime Minister abort the motion under the guise that he, he wanted time to look at it. And the motion had been sent to the Speaker more than six weeks before. And the law says that the motion, motions only need six or seven days' notice. But the, but the Prime Minister, in his dictatorial and arrogant fashion, and you must understand, this Prime Minister has only been in government for one year. And the Prime Minister behaves in that manner. Then it came to the adjournment of the House. He, is, he adjourns the House for 40 days, putting the country in jeopardy, just because he wants to teach us a lesson. The Prime Minister will not, will not succeed in quieting the St. Lucia Labour Party. The Prime Minister will not succeed in sending us into oblivion. We will do all that is legally possible to ensure that democracy prevails in St. Lucia. We will continue to go to Parliament because we believe that we have to express the wishes of the people of St. Lucia and we have to show the, the, the people of St. Lucia the wrongs and the ills of this, of this government. So the point that we are making is that we did not stay in the Parliament this morning. We will not give the Prime Minister the courtesy of listening to him because he has shown utter contempt and disregard to the people of St. Lucia and the Parliament of St. Lucia. The Parliament does not belong to the Prime Minister. All 17 members are duly elected by the people. The Prime Minister is the Prime Minister. We accept and we respect, but we will not allow the Prime Minister to run roughshod over us, nor will we tolerate the victimization and the vindictiveness and the arrogance of this government. So in conclusion, we left Parliament because we thought that is the right thing to do and we will not give the Prime Minister the courtesy of listening to him after he has disrespected us in that manner. Thank you. You can take questions and your questions can be